Right guys, welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to show you how to paint Dr. Octopus from Marvel Crisis Protocol. So we're going to get straight in there. The first color I'm using here is Lead Belcher and we are going to be dry brushing all of the tentacles uh, as well as the kind of backpack that he has, uh, as well as the drain that are around the feet on the base that I've chosen to use for Doc Ock. Of course, I have primed the miniature in a matte black primer, um, just because I, I think black gives a, a very nice coat to work from uh, and start and build those bright colours up from there. So just making sure that all of the tentacles are fully covered uh, with a nice dry brush um, to make them really pop and stand out. So the next step is to use Warpstone Glow and we're going to paint all of Doc's uh, overalls with Warpstone Glow. This will probably need two coats to cover the black properly, but I like Warpstone Glow. It's a very rich colour uh, and helps stick with that kind of comic booky feel. Um, so yeah, nice steady away. Um, all of his arms and of course all of the uh, legs as well. So now that the green is done, we will now start on the yellows. And for the yellow base, I use Avaland Sunset. It's a nice base paint and covers quite well, but you're still going to need to use two coats. Uh, and we're going to cover the gloves, the boots, and of course his shoulder harnesses, uh, as well as the center of Doc's belt. Don't forget to also use a small amount of yellow just to do the center of the lasers uh, in the middle of the claws as well. Next up, we are going to be using Bugman's Glow to paint the face. Um, this one was a little bit tricky. Um, make sure we don't overlap any of the edges uh, with the yellow. Uh, I use quite a fine brush for this, um, but this is a fantastic base color for the skin. Um, to start from. Next up I use Mornfang Brown for Doc's hair. This is a very rich brown, quite ready, um, but I, I think this goes quite well with the model. So just being careful not to get any on the face that we've just painted up. Next up I use Coella Green Shade to shade in all the green overalls uh, that Doc is wearing. Uh, this helps just emphasize all of the recesses and create that little extra layer of highlight and shade. So the next step that I do is I use Agrax Earth Shade to shade all of the yellow areas such as the boots, the gloves and the shoulder harness. Looking back once I've actually finished the model, uh, I'm not too fussed about this choice. Uh, if I was to do it again, I would actually use Iandin Yellow Contrast Paint uh, as I feel that gives a much warmer and less dirty feel uh, to the shade that the Agrax is applying to the boots, uh, gloves and shoulder harnesses here. I, I'm still reasonably happy with the result, but if I was to do it again, like I said, I would definitely use the Iandin Yellow Contrast as a shade instead of the Agrax. The next wash that we apply is Reikland Flesh Shade and we apply this to both the face and the hair to give it that warm glow. Next up we are going back in with Warpstone Glow to re-highlight the raised areas uh, of Doc's overall, so in particular around the thighs. You can see here the seams on his trousers. We've also got his elbows, his biceps, uh, and his shoulders as well. So once the green is highlighted, we are going back in again with another highlight. This time I am using Moot Green, and we're just gonna pick up the absolute raised areas. Uh, so again, same places, but only smaller amounts this time. We're gonna go for the top of the thighs, we're gonna go for the knees, biceps, elbows, Things like that, just the absolute raised areas 
to help generate that little bit extra light. So moving back to the yellow, we're going to use Iandin yellow just to highlight all of the gloves, boots and shoulder harnesses again, making sure that we just pick out the raised areas. You can see here each of the, the ridges on the edges of the glove running horizontal as well as the ones running vertical. We'll also make sure that we highlight the straps and the edges of the boots as well as the shoulder harness as well. Once we're done with the Avalon Sunset, once again, we will then use Uriel Yellow just to highlight the extreme raised areas of all of that yellow. So again, the ridges of the gloves, the straps on the boots and the shoulder harnesses. We then use Bugman's Glow to lightly highlight the face again. The Reichland Flesh Shade Wash that we applied will darken it down slightly, so we just want to start lightening up that little bit. So we're just going over the raised areas with the Bugman's Glow this time. Once done with the Bugman's Glow, we will then highlight it a step further using Cadian Flesh Tone, in particular on the cheeks, the chin, the nose, the eyebrows, and of course the ears, just to help that uh, raised features really pop and stand out. To highlight the hair, we will use Gawthor Brown, and we're just going to make sure that we cover each of the strands that you can see coming across Doc's forehead, as well as painting a few lines across the top of his head to help with that definition. Next up, we will use Abaddon Black to paint in the spectacles. Now, you'll have to forgive me here, I ended up doing most of this off camera because I have gigantic shovel hands and I couldn't really reach around the camera very well, but you can see here, uh, the finished piece. We then use Eschen Grey with a large dry brush to start dry brushing the concrete on the base, giving it quite a nice heavy dry brush so that not too much of the black is showing through, just the absolute uh, lowest of the cracks in the pavement. Now to help give that feel of concrete, we're going to be applying multiple shades of grey here. So next we move on to Mechanicus Standard Grey and give it a dry brush, not quite as heavy as the Eschen Grey. And you can see here, whilst you can still see the Eschen Grey through, uh, the Mechanicus Standard just helps pick up all of those raised areas. But to emphasise this even further, we're then going to highlight it again with another colour. So this time we're going to use the same principle, but just a little bit lighter with the dry brushing once again, using Dawnstone. And you can see here in particular the edges of the base, it really, really helps emphasize those edges in particular. And before the final highlight of the base, we will be using a little bit of a Thonian Camel shade. I like this because it's quite a greeny brown um, and it really looks quite dirty. And I'll be applying this around the manhole covers in the cracks and crevices uh, and any of the recesses on the base. Next up we'll be using Celestra Grey as a final dry brush layer just to help pick out all of those raised areas and in particular around where we've applied the Athonian Camel Shade uh, it'll help just give that extra definition around there. And with that we're nearly there, I'll be using Stormhost Silver to dry brush the manhole covers, just again to highlight those raised areas and really make the light shine and pop off the top of all of those grates. And just picking up the Celestra Grey again, we'll be painting the center of Doc's glasses, just so that you can really see that menacing look that he has on his face. And for this, I actually used a double zero brush because this part is quite small. And finally, we'll be using a bad and black to paint the rim of the base. Using a size two brush just to get a very nice coverage on there. And there we have it, folks. Doc Ock is now complete. This was a really fun miniature to paint. Um, please check out, of course, the rest of the channel. There'll be more painting tutorials for more characters as we get them painted. Uh, and of course, once the core set is complete, we will be filming battle reports as well. 
you would like extra content and exclusive tutorials, please support us via Patreon or by becoming a YouTube member. Uh, links are in the description down below. But thank you very much for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time.